Hey, I appreciate you dropping by for my daily devotions. Friday, November the 3rd, 2023. And we're going to look at Revelation chapter 11, uh, Matthew chapter 18, Psalm 122, and Leviticus chapter 1, starting the book of Leviticus. Yesterday we read the 17th chapter of Matthew, and it's the, the chapter where Jesus goes up on the Mount of Transfiguration with uh, uh, his disciple, couple of disciples, and transfigured before before them. And uh, then he comes down from the mountain, and their his disciples were trying to heal a boy with a demon, and they couldn't do it. And they asked him, "Why couldn't we do that?" In verse twenty, he replied, "Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth." If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Faith can move mountains. Faith can change things. Usually involves prayer and usually involves some work of some sort, but faith can change things. Need to hang on to that and to be faithful and God will bless as only he can. Let's take a minute and pray and we'll jump into it, okay? Let's pray. Father, speak to us today with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, apply it to our hearts. Change us, Heavenly Father, from the inside out by the truth we find in your word and the power of the Holy Spirit as he applies it to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshipers there, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire, for, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower them and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figur figuratively called Sodom and, uh, and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days of a, a breath of life from God entered them, they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud where their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken the great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your saints and those who reverence your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant, and there were flash there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, 
and an earthquake and a great hail storm. And then Matthew chapter 18, as we read from the word of God in the Bible, Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of these things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands and two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out, throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell of fire. What's he saying there? He's not telling you to gouge your eye out or cut your hand off, He, but he is telling you to avoid sin at all costs. Avoid it like it's the plague, because it is the plague. So don't go out and gouge your eye out because you're lusting. I heard of a guy who did that once. He, the point is avoid sinful behavior. It's devastating. See verse 10. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one who that the one that wandered? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than all the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just between the two of you, if he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others, two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if Two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brothers when he sins against me, up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owned him, who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay pay the debt. They would sell, sell them into bond servanthood or slavery, okay? The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned, owed him a hundred denarii. That's a small amount of money, okay? He grabbed him, began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. He, his fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. <clears throat> then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, the master turned him over to the jailer's to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. 
This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. Forgiveness is what's being taught. Then Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones of judge, for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. Boy, that's an important prayer right now, isn't it, with a war going on in, in Israel? May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperities. Then we begin a journey through the book of Leviticus, chapter 1. The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. He said, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when any of you brings an offering to the Lord, bring it as your offering, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he is to offer a male without defect. He must present it at the entrance to the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. He is to lay his hands on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He is to slaughter the young bull before the Lord, and then Aaron and Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and sprinkle it against the altar on the on all sides at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He is to skin the burnt the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, are to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat. On the, bur on the burning wood that it is that is on the altar. He is to wash the inner parts of the legs with water, and the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. If the offering is a burnt offering from the flock, from either the sheep or the goats, he is to offer a male without defect. He is to slaughter it at the north side of the altar before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle its blood against the altar on all sides. He is to cut it into pieces, and the priest shall arrange them, including the head and the fat, on the burning wood that is on the altar. He is to wash the inner parts and the legs with water, and the priest is to bring all of it and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord." If the offering to the Lord is a bird offering of birds, he is to offer a dove or a young pigeon. The priest shall bring it to the altar, wring off the head, and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. He is to remove the crop with its contents and throw it to the east side of the altar where the ashes are. He shall tear it open by the wings, not severing it completely, and then the priest shall burn it on the wood that is on the fire of the altar, on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Well, God has spoken. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for speaking to us. Apply it all to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us different and new because we heard from you. Thank you for this great day and bless it with to your honor and your glory as we live for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.